We have spent a lot of time with Anne in the aftermath of True Colors, and throughout Season 3, she has gone on a lot of fun and lighthearted adventures with her frog family. These adventures have not been entirely without conflict, because without conflict, it's really hard to have a story at all, but the conflicts have been easily resolved and the basic sense of security and stability that Anne and the planters enjoy has not seriously been challenged. There's never really been any doubt that everything is going to turn out alright, both practically and for Anne's psyche. What Anne has not done is seriously discuss her friends, because that would be a much darker topic to discuss. Her friendships with Sasha and Marcy have been tested, and Anne has discovered the three of them are different people than she thought they were. And also, her friends, whatever her complicated feelings about them are, these friends are in peril. They're stuck in a dangerous world, and she has no idea what happened to them. And yet, she never says anything about these friends. She mentions Marcy once when she's reading Marcy's journal, but other than that, she, the only time we see Anne mention Marcy and Sasha is in the new normal. She very much apparently does not want to talk about her friends, and it's really odd that the show appears not to want to talk about these friends either. The Throughout the first seven weeks of season three, the show has not yet pushed Anne into confrontation with the fact that she cannot just ignore what happened to her friends and the bonds between them. Even when she talks about the reasons why she wants to return to Amphibia, what she is apparently driving toward throughout these relatively lighthearted weeks of season three, she doesn't talk about her friends. And her parents never expect her to talk about her friends. We never see them really mention, oh hey, where are Sasha and Marcy? We never see them ask about these very close friends of Anne's. Now one could half excuse them not wondering about Sasha, because it's reasonable perhaps that they would not be too keen about Anne's friendship with Sasha considering who Sasha was back before she came to Amphibia. Now, Sasha was not a cruel or callous person. She was not really bitter and selfish, but she could be manipulative, and she was not always as empathetic as she could have been. Marcy, however, is very sweet and kind and caring and very unobjectionable. One would expect Anne's parents, or heck, just anyone, to wonder about Marcy. What has happened to her? Even Marcy's parents, whatever you want to think of them, at least seem to care about her. They seem to be interested in talking to her. And they are very concerned, as any decent parents or even most non-decent parents would be to see their daughter rush out. It's not crossing a high bar as a parent to be reasonably concerned when your daughter runs out in tears and doesn't come back for six months. And yet, we hear nothing about Sasha and Marcy. Now, the most common explanation that people seem to bring up regarding Anne's refusal to talk about Sasha and Marcy is that she's repressing her feelings toward her friends. She's in denial. She's refusing to acknowledge her uncertainty and anxiety. And maybe, I guess? But what we see in Amphibia Season 3A goes a bit beyond that. No one would be expecting her to constantly be sad all the time. No one's saying she can't have any fun adventures because her friends are gone. But it's not like we even see her being evasive or trying to get out of talking about Sasha and Marcy. 
she is never presented with a situation where she would have to be evasive. She's never presented with a situation where she would actually have to confront what happened to her friends. She seems rather happy-go-lucky and rather excitable. If anything, she's consistently happier than we see her back in seasons 1 and 2. There is no sense conveyed by the show that she is haunted by her own faults or her friends' faults or just the despair of seeing that childhood bond between the three of them disintegrate. Her two friends being trapped in another world, and even if they weren't trapped in another world, the relationship between the three of them is much more tenuous than it once was. And Anne's refusal to talk about her friends is thrown into sharp relief by episodes like Turning Point, and especially Olivia and Yunnan, because we see Anne's friends are constantly thinking about her and talking about her. They're very much concerned with her in a way that she doesn't seem to be concerned with them. In fact, the contrast between Marcy's existential dread and the body horror that is forced on her by the core and Anne's lighthearted adventures makes those lighthearted adventures seem a little callous and a little insensitive. Juxtaposed against the scenes taking place in Amphibia, the scenes taking place on Earth seem rather surreal and saccharine. They are far more fantastical than are the scenes that are actually taking place on the fantasy world. So what exactly is going on here? Again, there is a difference between Anne being in denial and the show itself being in denial and refusing to acknowledge the existence of Marcy and Sasha for any reasonable lengths of time during the episodes that take place on Earth. I assume they are doing this intentionally. The contrast is very stark. It's not like the show is ignoring Sasha and Marcy completely, but it's ignoring them in the Anne-focused episodes. Now, Anne cannot hide from this forever. She cannot just completely ignore her complicated feelings toward her friends. Eventually, Anne is going to have to return to Amphibia, and it appears that that might be happening fairly soon. Two of the three episodes we have coming up appear to be focused on her trying to return to Amphibia. And hopefully she is able to get back there by the midpoint of the season. These two episodes are If You Give a Frog a Cookie and Froggy Little Christmas. Hollywood Hop Pop could possibly be more interesting than it appears, but more than likely it's just another nice, sweet, but ultimately inconsequential episode, inconsequential both plot-wise, but more importantly inconsequential emotionally, about Hop Hop's acting career, which we've already seen quite a lot of throughout the past two seasons. Nothing against these more light-hearted episodes, even if they are a little anodyne, but when they start to pile up and Anne's actual sorrow and existential dread is not being acknowledged, the show can start to seem a little weird. In If You Give a Frog a Cookie, however, we are going to see Anne team up with that scientist and try to get home. Then you have Froggy Little Christmas, which is apparently both the mid-season finale and the Christmas special, which I will say is a bit of a weird choice to end on the Christmas special. Especially considering the special seems to be taking place in Los Angeles because it mentions the planter celebrating Christmas. So they are not going to get home by the If You Give a Frog a Cookie episode. Nonetheless, it is still possible to think that maybe they'll open a portal by the end of the If You Give a Frog a Cookie episode and then by the 
other episode, the Christmas episode, Froggy Little Christmas, they will finally get home. They'll celebrate Christmas and then go back to Amphibia. But the portal back to Amphibia is a plot problem. That's not where my interest in the show really lies. I'm far more interested in the character problem of Anne having to confront her conflicted feelings about her friends, who she feels betrayed by, but who she also was very imperfect toward. Let's not pretend that Anne is a complete innocent here. I want to see her have to confront the shadows of her friends, and I hope that this happens before she goes back to Amphibia, though it might not. Now, while I dislike the whole Earth plot, I don't think it was a bad idea conceptually. I think it was just bad in execution. There are so many fascinating stories you could have told on Earth, such as you could talk about Anne having to try to adjust to living the life of a normal middle school girl after the sorrows and wild wars and battles she saw there in Amphibia. The show could have focused in far more on the grief and loss experienced by Anne's parents. It could have depicted Anne having to go to Marcy and Sasha's parents and try to talk to them about their daughters not being back. Now, it doesn't have to be all grim like that, but it is a grim scenario, Anne returning home alone, and I hope the show acknowledges that eventually. I hope Anne acknowledges that eventually. There's only so long she can go without mentioning her friends. Hopefully she will talk about them soon, and I think it is going to happen sometime in these next few episodes, or at least she's going to have to start talking about her friends. So anyway, thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can and you want to see more videos like this. Keep watching Amphibia. Sound off with your thoughts about the show in the comment section below. Why do you think Anne constantly refuses to mention Marcy and Sasha? What's the show doing by having her not mention them? Anyway, tune in soon for the next analysis. It will be coming soon. Promise you that. Thank you all again. Adios, comrades.